Hi everyone and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to build a compound interest calculator in Excel to calculate your savings. In other words, based on these inputs here, I'll show you how to calculate the future value of your savings at the end of your savings period. To do this, I'll start by walking you through the inputs. I'll then show you how to use the future value formula to calculate the outputs and finally build a calculation table to provide a periodic breakdown of your savings and also check that the future value calculation is correct. Most savings accounts will have some or all of the following inputs. Firstly, you'll have an initial investment, in other words, the amount of money you'll deposit into your savings account in the first month. We'll assume this is £1,000. There will also be a savings rate, which is the rate at which your savings will increase over time, in our case 1.5%. The length of time is the number of years that you'll be saving for, and the compound frequency is how often the savings rates will be compounded every year. For example, in this case, the compound frequency is 12 times per year, which means that the interest is added after month one, and then the interest is added onto this amount after month two, and so on. Finally, we have the contribution per period. This is also known as your standing order. In other words, we will be depositing £400 into our savings accounts every month. Now, based on these inputs, we can then calculate the future value of our savings using the future value function. So we type equals FV, first enter the rate, which is 1.5%. However, since this is an annual rate, we have to divide it by the compound frequency which is 12 to give the monthly raise. We then input the number of compounding periods, which is the savings term multiplied by the yearly compounding frequency. We then input the payments in each compounding period, which is 400 pounds, followed by the initial investments, which is 1000 pounds. And finally we input one, because we'll assume that the payments is timed at the beginning of every month. Now, before we click enter, we're going to add a negative sign in front of the future value formula to ensure that the final value is positive. Therefore, the future value of our savings is £5,854.28. To calculate the interest earned, we can calculate the amount saved without interest, which is 1000 so the initial investments, plus the monthly standing order, multiplied by the number of periods, which is the length of time in years, multiplied by the compound frequency. The interest earned is the future value minus the amount saved. Therefore, this kind of a savings account would earn £54.28 in interest. Now, how do we know that the future value formula calculated the future value correctly? Well, we can build a calculation table to check this. So for each of the 12 months or savings periods, we're going to calculate the amount in the account at the beginning of the month, the interest earned, and the amount at the end of the month. Initially, the amount in the account will be £1,000, which is the initial investment. The interest payment at the start will be 0%, as we'll only be earning interest in months 1 to 12. Our amount at the end is the initial investment multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate, which stays the same as the interest is 0%. In month 1, we'll have the amount at the end of the previous month plus our monthly contribution. Before we click enter, we're going to add absolute references to ensure this value remains static as we bring it down later. The interest earned in months 1 to 12 is the annual interest rate, which is 1.5%, divided by the number of compounding periods, which is 12, to give the monthly raise. Now, once again, before we click enter, we're going to add absolute references to both of these to ensure they remain static. Our savings amount at the end of the month is the amount at the start of the month, multiplied by 1 plus the monthly interest rate. Therefore, at the start of the month, we'll have £1,400 in our accounts and we'll have earned an interest of 0.13%, which will grow our savings by £1.75. Now, to bring these formulae down to the remaining months, we can simply select this row and then double-click the bottom right-hand corner. This has calculated the amount at the start and end of all 12 months. 
as you can see, the amount at the end of month 12 is the same as the future value we calculated earlier. Now we can test whether the values still match when using different figures. So let's change the initial investments, the interest rate, and the monthly contribution. Once again, both figures match. Now, if we change the term to two years instead of one year, you'll notice that the figures no longer match. This is because our calculation table is still only considering 12 months or one year. To make the figures match, we'll have to drag the calculation table to calculate 24 months or two years. As you can see, now both figures match. So that's how you can create a compound interest calculator in Excel to calculate the returns on your savings accounts. Please comment down below if you have any questions. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.